Thanks again for checking out the Coding Fanatic YouTube channel. Head on over to CodingFanatic.com and join our mailing list for weekly updates on Android tutorials, career advice, and more. So once again, head on over to CodingFanatic.com and thanks for your support. Welcome back. In this video, to continue where I left off last time, we'll, we will be setting up our app to open activities with the click of a button, as promised. But before that, I wanted to point something out that I neglected to mention in my last video. So last time I mentioned that there were, there were red squigglies in the Android manifest underneath our, you might've just seen it for a second, underneath the names of our two activities, second and third. This is because the new classes were blank. And in order to fix that error, your class must extend the app compat activity class. So when you create a new class and you add it, update your Android manifest, but also make sure that you extend your class extends the app compat activity class so that you can get rid of this issue that, that you just saw disappear uh, here in your Android manifest. All right. Now let's switch back to visual studio. Uh, last video, I tried it with Android Studio, but I'm not sure if many people will be able to see it as well. If you have any input on this, let me know in the comments below. Moving right along. Our first step here for adding our button will be to change, to add a button here. So by default, there is always a text view that says hello world here in our XML file for our main, our activity main XML. We're going to save time and just change it to a button and we will update the text to read click here to start act two okay casing doesn't matter so much because it's uppercase by default for buttons all right and we're gonna also ch set our id so Android ID equals start act two. Okay. So uh, for those of you who, uh, if you're new, I do have a video, a tutorial on how to add buttons to your Android apps. Uh, there should be a card in the top right that appears right here. All right, so moving right along. So we've added our button and we've updated the text and we set an ID, all right? So next let's save and let's see what this will look like. All right, I'm gonna fast forward here so you can see when it reloads. Okay, as you can see, we have a button here now that, that reads click here to start act two. Clicking it won't do anything just yet, but before we set that up, let's go ahead and do some copy pasting. Oh, okay, oh, I had it open here. Yep. So we're going to copy and paste everything from activity main, go into second.xml, and paste. And we're going to update our ID here to say start act three. And our text will say click here to start act three. All right. Now we'll do the same thing for the third XML. Paste everything. And we're going to do something different. Instead of start act four, we're going to say start act one. That will be the ID name and it will say click here to start act one. Now the reason I'm doing this is because for our example, I want it where when you click on the button act one, it starts activity, activity two, same thing in two, it starts three. And when you click it in three, it takes you back to the beginning with act one again. All right. So now that we have all three set set up to open our activities, let's head back to mainactivity.java. And in here, we're going to add button objects so that we can actually reference 
the buttons here on our application. So I'm going to fast forward to setting everything up. Since uh, again, if you have seen my previous video on how to add buttons, then you already know how to get through this, but I'll just fast forward through the code and give you a brief explanation of what we've done. Okay. So what I've done here is I've added a button called button start second and an intent called intent. Now what this button will do is this is what we're going to use to interface with the button here in our activity main, which is called start act two. And ideally when we click on this button, it will open activity two. All right. So I've created a button object and I've also created, created an intent object. Now intents tell the operating system, which activity to start when something happens. So in this case, when we click on the button, it's going to tell it to start our second activity. Okay. So next we're going to actually here in on create, we're going to configure, configure our button. So button start second equals or oh yeah, equals find view by ID and we're going to I'm going to close this out r dot ID dot and here it is start act two All right start act two save great and so now our button has been configured and the next step will be to set up the listener. Now what the listener does is what it sounds like. It listens for some change in the system. In this case, when we are on click listener, when we click on the button, start button, start second, it should perform some task. And in our case, it's going to start the second activity when we click on the button. So I'll, again, I'm going to type out the code and fast forward and give you a quick rundown on what we've done. Okay. So we have our button here, button start second dot set on click listener. This is a method, which, as I said before, will set up our on click listener. All right. Now in our, in our parentheses, we have new view dot on click listener, and we're going to in open parentheses, we are going to override the on click method and what this will do is when we click on our button, it will call or invoke the on click method. And we have changed what the default on click method does, or in, the, or in other words, we over, we're overriding it. And what we're going to do is use our intent object, which we created up here. And we're going to instantiate it as a new intent. And the arguments we're sent passing are main activity dot this, which is the name of our current activity, main activity dot Java. We're going to say main activity dot this comma second dot class. So what this does is it makes our intent. It tells it that, all right, we're in the main activity class right now. And when you click on this button, button start second, once this is clicked, it will start second dot class, right? So that's what the intent says. And the only, the next step is just to say start activity. We use the start activity method and pass it our intent object. So again, we have our button up here. We have our intent. We are using find view by ID to link our button object to the button that we are styled in our XML or in our layout. Here it is, start act two. And we have view, find view by ID, R dot ID dot start act two. We set our on click listener and we tell it that when you click on this button, create this intent using this class main activity and our target class that we want to open, which is second dot class. And then you start the activity using that intent. All right. Now let's go back to Android studio and see what our changes look like. All right. So here we are in, I refreshed the application, applied our changes. Now, when we click on the button, click here to start act two, it opens up 
Act 2. And we have our button here that says click to start Act 3. But of course, when you click on it, nothing happens. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And what we're going to do is, again, to save time, we're just going to copy and paste all this code into our second.java and our third.java. Okay, so we have in second.java start, we're going to call this one button start third. Come back over to main activity and copy our our code here. All right, and I'm just going to jump forward so you can see what the completed code will look like. Okay, so we've copied our code. And again, just to review, we have in our second class, our button, which I called start third, since we're starting the third class, it just seemed like a better naming convention. Button start third equals find view by ID. We have start act three, set the on click listener. And in our intent, we have our class, which is second dot this, and the target class, which is third dot class. And you start the activity. Do the same thing again in third dot Java, button start first. And here we have find view by ID, start act one, set the on click listener so that here we are in third dot this, and we're going to open main activity dot class. All right, so let's uh, refresh our application and see what the final result will look like. Okay, so here we are in our application. And if we click on this button, click here to start act two, you see that it starts act two. And if you click on this button, click here to start act three, it starts act three. And finally, if you click here to start act one, it starts the first activity. Now, now you understand how to open an activity by clicking a button. However, some of you might be wondering, how would I get back to the first activity if I were in the second activity? So if, in other words, if I'm in act two, how do I get back to act one? Well, by clicking the back key, you can go back by one activity. And if you click on the button again, again, it will take you back to act two. Now, let's say you're in act three. You're like, well, I want to get back to act one, but I don't want to click the back key. Well, I know clicking the back key will take me back to second and clicking it a third second time will take me back to act one. But well, what, what if there isn't there an easier way to do this? other than just clicking on the button one more time to get to act one. And I'm glad you asked this question. There is indeed. Now there is another feature that we can add to this application and it is, it uses a hierarchy to organize our activities by setting one parent and multiple children. And what this will allow us to do is add an arrow up here in the action bar, which when clicked will take you back to your main activity. So uh, in our next video, I'm going to show you how to add a back arrow that lets you return to previous activities. And, uh, and I'll also explain what it is that exactly why we're able to use the back key to go back to a previous activity. So once again, thank you so much for tuning into the Coding Fanatic YouTube channel. This is your host, Richard Clark. If you liked the video, don't forget to comment, subscribe, like, and turn on notifications so you can see new videos each week. And again, if you head over to my website, codingfanatic.com, and you join my mailing list, then you'll automatically get updates when you when I post new videos, tutorials, and all type all the content that I that I create. So once again, thank you all so much for tuning in. This is your host, Richard Clark, signing out, and I'll see you all on the next one. Peace.